In this video, I'm going to cover a brand new book called 6502 for Beginners. It was written by John Dale, also known as the Old School Coder. The book is a perfect introduction for anybody that wants to dive into the world of 8-bit computing and assembly language programming. No prior experience with assembly language or low-level programming is required. By the end of the book, you'll be able to write simple assembly programs, understand how the 6502 processes instructions, and even create your own small applications for retro computers or emulators. The book is available in both paperback and hardcover versions worldwide using Amazon On Demand printing services. The paperback runs $19.95, while the hardcover book will set you back $39.99. All the proceeds are going to charity, so this is not a money-making venture. One of the beautiful things about the book is that the tools demonstrated in the book are cross-platform, running in Windows, Mac, and Linux computers. In the next segment, I will point out some of the differences between the paperback and hardcover versions. And following that, I will cover how to get your development environment configured to run through the examples demonstrated in the book. All right, in this segment, I wanted to talk about some of the problems that there were in the printing process when it came to this book. I'm not gonna harp on it too much because after all, this is a for charity project and there's just really just minor little things. And for example, if I'm showing you on page 26 to get started, the uh, images are a little bit small, so it might be difficult to uh, figure out what's going on, but if you're following along and you install the software, you should be able to follow along pretty easily. And then also, if we look on some of the printing issues, like on page 34, the font gets a little bit blurry. It might be difficult to see here, but this is not an issue on, of course, the, the more premium version of the book here, the hard co cover copy it looks just great so if that's going to be an issue for you uh, and if you have the money i would spring for this version because everything just looks a little clearer and a little better so that's the main thing in this section that i wanted to talk about and let's go ahead and take a look at the software installation process All right, in this segment, I'm going to download, install, and configure the software required to follow along with the examples in the book. In order to do this, we need VS Code and the OSK simulator, which we can acquire from his GitHub site. But first, let's go ahead and get VS Code. And I like to use a tool called Nine Night. It's at ninenight.com. That's N-I-N-I-T-E.com. Because you can just go in here, and we need Visual Studio Code. And then we're going to need this open JDK. Uh, we need the Java runtime. So I'm going to just select those two. And that just packages these up. And all we have to do is run it. And it will install those two programs. And we don't have to click next, next, next. While that's going, I'm going to go ahead and paste in the URL to OSK's book, and we're gonna download from this tab here and hit download zip. And let's check it out. We have Visual Studio Code already installed. And once it's done downloading, we gotta go ahead and it's a zip file, and we're gonna extract all. And I'm going to go ahead and browse to the C drive and create a folder here called C64, and we're gonna select that folder and then extract our files there. Oops. We'll just confirm that that's there. And we are ready to rock and roll with VS Code. So we'll double click VS Code. In the book, OSK also recommends we install the extensions. So we should might as well go ahead and grab that. Type kick assembler. The one that he recommends is this kick assembler by Paul Hawker. And we're gonna ignore these messages that pop up on the bottom right, don't worry about that for now. And then the main thing that we need to do is go into our Q 
keyboard shortcuts. And this is in page 28. And in there, we have to set up a shortcut. And we are looking for the task run, the command run task. Control shift and R. So it should say control shift and R here. And then once we do that, we can open up our code here, just for example, and do control shift and R. And then we're going to launch the simulator. The main thing is just that I could see the whole thing right here. And the neat thing about this, the simulator, it has these little commands. You can hit next to execute the next command. And then you could see the all the registers, the X and Y, your flags. You have the zero page memory up here, your stack memory, your uh, user specified memory. And these are all the commands right here. You have next instruction, execute program, set memory, uh, set the register, set a flag, or set user memory view, and you have exit. And those commands, as well as a further detail explanation of what all this means is contained within the book. So that is how we configure. That's all you need in order to follow along in this book. And you pretty much use the same instructions if you're using a Mac and if you're using a Linux computer, which is beautiful, makes this cross-platform independent. So if you're just trying to figure out what is this book all about, this is the 6502 for Beginners book. It's a great book for the beginner. And it starts off in the very beginning with a brief explanation of early computers and 6502 processors and on the different computer systems that use the 6502 and the arcade machines. And then right after that, it starts getting into the addressing and the different things that it's being used for. And then you go into uh, installing the software so that you can follow along with the examples. Because after all, this is a programming book and the idea behind it is to learn how to program, at least at a beginning level, how to do some basic things on these retro computers using 6502. And this isn't necessarily stuck to the Commodore 64. This could be on any retro computing system. That's one of the beauties of this book. And then what you do after you have the software installed, you have these little gray screens. And these are where this is the simulator where once the software is loaded, you can follow along with the instructions here and it shows you exactly what's going on. And that's what a good majority of the book is, is following along these examples as you learn. And in the back side of the book, towards the end, there's a nice explanation of all of the commands of the instruction set. And so you have all the instruction set. And, and the really nice thing on, in this section is that you have not only the instructions of explanation, but you also have the flags that are affected on each instruction. So that's really, really nice. And then as you zoom to the back, the back side of the book, because that kind of takes you to the end, and then there's, there's a little bit of an index in the back. So not only do you have a table of contents, but you have the index. There's some brief explanations. And essentially, that is what you get in this book. I, I do believe the premium version is worth the added cost. And it's a really great book for the beginner.